Well, hey guys, time for another video. We're going to talk about bridging amplifiers for more power. And I'll also do a follow up video about paralleling amplifiers for more power. And this mainly applies to chip amps, although it doesn't have to. But it's something that's commonly done with chip amps to get more power out of them. Sometimes they bridge them right inside the same IC, which is often done with car stereo type IC amplifier output stages. And I'll explain how that's done. And there's some you know concerns in doing it. You have to watch what you're doing so you don't run into any problems. Now I have a cute little twin amplifier here using the LM1875 chips. Looks so nice and clean, but when I get all the wires and the heat sinks put on, it's going to look nice and messy. But normally, if you want to bridge an LM1875, it'd be better just to go get a stronger amplifier like a LM3886. But since I don't have an extra one, these will work perfectly for the demonstration. Okay, let's talk about bridging amplifiers for more power. First we have to look at a single-ended push-pull stage with a 24 volt supply. And keep it simple, we'll just say it's a split type supply that has a plus 12 and minus 12 volt rail. And I'm showing a very simplified output stage connected to those rails. And we'll say we have a 4 ohm load connected. Well, we have 24 volts to work with in our output stage. However, in the real world, it's going to be somewhat shy of that because you have losses in the emitter resistors, losses across the output transistors. And with the lower impedance load, there might be some drive current losses and stuff like that. I mean, you don't get the full drive current because of the transistor betas and all that, you know, rigmarole and all that good stuff. So, for this case, we'll say we lose 2 volts from the rails before the output starts to clip. So, we can swing up to 10 volts peak and down to minus 10 volts peak right at the clipping point. So in other words, we have 20 volts peak to peak and 10 volts peak. Okay, that's fine and dandy, but what's the RMS output? Well, to figure the RMS output, we have to multiply our 10 volts peak by the square root of 2, the inverse of the square root of 2, which is 0.707. And you can see why I chose 10 volt, volts, because it's easy to calculate what that is and we'll just say it's 7 volts RMS. So across our output load here we have a 7 volt RMS waveform and that makes it easy to calculate the output power of this amplifier. Uh, so 7 squared is 49 divided by load impedance 4 ohms. So our amplifier can make 12.25 watts into a 4 ohm load with our plus minus 12 volt rails. Well, let's say we want double shock power or quadruple shock power. Let's say our 12 watts or so is not quite enough with our given supply rails here. Now what can we do about that? Well, enter the bridge amplifier. What it is, is we take two push-pull stages, connect them in this fashion with the load between them, and that's where we get bridge from because the load is not connected to ground, it's bridged across the outputs. On one amplifier, we input a standard non-inverted signal, and on 
the other side, or the other amplifier, we inverse the signal. So what's happening now, as one signal is increasing in amplitude, the other is decreasing by the same amount. So when this amplifier here hits 10 volts peak, this side is negative 10 volts. That means there's 20 volts across that. And in RMS, that would be 14 volts. So 14 volts RMS, square that, divided by our 4 ohms again. And we have 49 watts. And if you do the math, 12.25 times 4 is 49. We have quadrupled our output. Now, in real life, you don't actually get that because another problem is you're, you know, you're doubling the voltage that through a given impedance, so you're going to double the current. When you double the current, you're going to incur more losses. So it might actually be, in the real world, it might get 45 volts. Depends on your supply. You know, more current means your supply is going to sag more. You know, just a lot of things it depends on. But it is going to be significantly more output than you got from the single-ended push-pull stage here, even though you're running the same supply voltage. A couple gotchas, though, is... You know, if your chip amp, say, has a 3 amp limit, well, you can't run 4 ohms here. You have to go with 8, or maybe 6 would work. So if we went with 8 ohms, then instead of getting double or um, quadruple the power, we'd only get double the power. We get around 24 watts. And the actual RMS output current of the LM1875 in my test we're going to run here shortly. I measured it at 3 amps. So if we're running this with 24 volt supply, you know, 7, let's see what it is here, 7 volts output divided by 4 ohms. That's 1.75 watts, uh, I'm sorry, amps. And that's going to be doubled. That'll be, uh, what is that, three and a half? Oops, darn it. Uh, 1.75 times two. Yeah, three and a half amps now. So if this was an LM1875, it's not going to work because you're exceeding its current limit. And you also have to consider that speakers are reactive load and will draw more current, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, there's so many problems in the real world that you run into. So you have to remember that when you're going to bridge something. Now, let's say our amplifier will handle 8 ohm loads. So if we used 8 ohm loads here, let me clear that memory thing out. Um, well, we're still going to have our 7 volts RMS divided by, oh, I'm messing up big time. We've got to square that first and then divide it by 8. 6.125 watts. In the real world, again, it'll be a little bit more because of less losses at the higher impedance. But, you know, we'll just keep it simple here. So, you know, if we have an 8 ohm speaker here, we'll get about 6 watts. And in bridge configuration with an 8 ohm speaker, it's quadruple that at 24.5 watts. So there you go, that's bridging. Let's actually hook up a bridge amplifier and measure the output. Okay, I've set up the power supply for it. And what I'll do is test one channel first before we do the bridging. So I added some 10,000 microfarad capacitors. And this circuit here has a rectifier. 
Boy bridge using this because this power supply won't have enough grunt. I'm using a bulb limiter and my Variac and uh, let's make sure it works. Well that's not good. That's power supply hum right to the output. That's why I use a bulb limiter because it's my current well I have to see what the problem is it sounds like I have something hooked up wrong well I think nothing is wrong I was using a too small of bulb and it didn't allow the voltage to come up enough so see now when I turn it on it just clicks no filament glow and let's see if I touch the input. Yeah. You can hear it. So it's actually working just fine. Let me test the other channel. Yep, it's working fine. All right, I have the 8 ohm load connected to the resistor there clamped on a little heat sink and the scope is connected to the load there and oh yeah I should mention that that's not an appropriate heat sink it's just for the test this is only going to be powered up for a few seconds at a time so I'm not real concerned about using a gargantuan heat sink well now I have to look at which voltage I should use. Now since running in bridge, the each amp sees double the current, I'm going to have to make like I'm using 4 ohms. So, this is the chart I tested the LM380 or uh, 1875 with and I figured it you know, goes to a little over 3 amps of current before the current limit kind of flattens it out there and uh, so I want to have a little bit of headroom for reactive loads and I'll just say uh, two amps or so so it looks like between here so if I run it at a uh, 30 volt supply get the measurement from that and let's see I should get I should get about nine watts it looks like but we'll uh, measure it here and see what we get remind me why I hate stepped volume controls on these things so I had to put a potentiometer in there. Boy that Siglent function generator is looking pretty nice right now. I wish I had some money. Boy that thing would help me a lot. Yeah I just can't throw money around on that stuff. It, the cheapest one's like 500 bucks I think. But it is the next bench top piece of equipment I'm going to get if, if I ever clear this bench off and come into some money here. That's definitely on my list. Okay. Well, I got all of the bumpity bumps out of the blue FFT waveform. You know, that's the spectrum analyzer mode. And uh, 8.943, it's jumping around. I'll just say 8.93. Turn that off because of this heat sink will get hot quick. Eh, it's not too bad. And yeah, that got hot. Grab my calculator and see how many watts we are putting out. Of course, um, 
Well, I'm a bit high there. I, I better retake that measurement. And we're getting a little bit of bumpity bumps going on there. And turn that. Eh, still about the same. I'm gonna drop it down. It looks like it's clipping a bit. Nine volts even. Nine volts. Well, that's square of nine eighty-one divided by eight. Ten point one two five watts. Huh. What the heck? Well, I wasn't really measuring. Oh, I gotta look at the 8 ohm one here, don't I? 8 ohm, 8 ohm. Actually, getting better. I was getting 9.12 before. That was when I was measuring with this. But I am using giant fat capacitors. There we go. This camera would decide to focus. That would be nice. But yeah. 10.125. That means we should get a little less than 40 in bridge mode. But hey, that's what experimentation is all about. Let's bridge it up and see what happens. Here's the schematic of the bridged amp. It's really two ordinary amplifiers, except I'm taking the output of the non-inverted amplifier, bringing it over to the input of the non-inverting, connected at this fashion here, and grounding this non-inverting input. So this becomes an inverting amplifier with the same gain. And we'll take some measurements here and see what it looks like. All right, just adjusting for no bumpity bumps. Right there, 16.7 volts. Okay, 16.7 squared divided by eight. 34.8 watts, just shy of 35 watts. And if I tweak it a bit, I can probably get 35 because we're, you know, like 34.9. So you can see how we improved the output, but we didn't get, we didn't get make it to 40 watts, which I was, you know, I expected we wouldn't. But like I said, because of the additional losses. Because of the extra current, you're going to lose a bit. So we lost 5 watts. So, well, um, let's see, 35 divided by 10 point, what was it, 1, 2, 5 or something like that. So realistically, with the LM1875, we got about 3.4, you know, just about three and a half times the output going with the bridge to circuit. With different amplifiers, you will do better, and others you'll do worse. Now, this brings up an interesting point. Is it worth bridging the LM1875? Well, nope. Here's the reason. Because with 8 ohm loads, you can just run the thing at 50 volts or plus minus 25 volts and you'll get you know 28 and a half watts from one amplifier you're only you know about seven watts short and that's just not a, a lot of difference in the actual loudness so you know I don't think it's worth the effort what's going to be interesting though is when we do the uh, paralleled amplifier and that'll come up next I was going to do it in this video, but, you know, the video is getting long, and uh, I decided to split it up. Well, that was fun. Hopefully you got something out of it, and appreciate your viewership, and thanks for watching.